LeBron James was a witness tonight. And the best recruiting tool that you could do if you're the Philadelphia 76ers is to go into Cleveland and beat them. And that's exactly what they did. 108 to 97, big time victory for the Sixers. Uh, Dave Rosinski is here. I am Adrian Fetchy. We're going to talk about this game right now. Yep. Ben Simmons, that entire game was whispering in, in uh, LeBron's ear. Hey, man, can't beat us. He might as well join us. Can't say it any better. Um, certainly felt like a, a milestone in this entire process. It was, I would say this is a process win and that we haven't beaten Cleveland in 11 tries. And um, this is the first time since we beat them since 2015. First time Ben Simmons, Joe Embiid, have ever beaten them. Um, and you know what? The entire game, we, we were in control the whole time. You didn't see any epic collapses, um, games in the past. where I mean, Most of these games we play Cleveland, we play them tight. But we just we can't hold on. And at the end of this game, I didn't even get that feeling in the pit of my stomach that it was even about to happen at any point. Um, Love Brett Brown's rotation at the end, uh, having a beat and Simmons in there together at all times, and then – uh, a little bit of rotation with Roko and uh, JJ, and then Dario, who – that guy is a warrior. I'll, I'll comment a little bit later on him, but Dario Sarge, he's the fucking man, dude. Dude, he I, is. And you know what? Cleveland was trying to get under his skin the entire game. I, I don't know if he's, he's – because he's white and goofy, but they were shouting at him at, in the corner when he hit the three. And then Jordan Clarkson, with, with, with the most pettiest play – uh, throwing the ball at his back because Sarge dunked it near the end. What do you think about Jordan Clarkson right now? Jordan, Jordan Clarkson is a bitch. I don't know what else to say about that. That right there, watching the whole thing between the actual action of him passing off his back to even more like the look on his face, it just reminded me of literally a six-year-old that just – I've never seen that in the NBA – um, if the NBA doesn't suspend him, I really hope Tyrone Liu DMPs him for one or two games, says, look, man, because that's just embarrassing. He, and he's, he's new on that team. Um, it's, it's not like he's, he's been there a while. So you're going to come onto a team and act like that at the end of a loss. It was like Chris Carter. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's, let's get more into Simmons's play. 10 of his 18 points. In the third quarter, nine rebounds and eight assists as well. So filling up the stack sheet. Saw a little bit of everything from him, some, some post-up moves. Uh, saw him attacking the basket. Also hit a pull-up jumper. Uh, so he, he was uh, monumental in this win tonight. Ben Simmons is getting more confident in every game, and it's, it's very apparent. Um, especially maybe not with the jump shooting so much yet, but distinctly when he's, when he's driving to the hoop, um, when, it, when there is only one singular person between him and a basket, there's a 0% chance that he's going to stop. He will score every single time. And I'm not, he's not even going to get fouled because by the time he gets past the guy and dunks it, the guy's just turning around. So but Ben Simmons, he's, he's basically the shady McCoy of the NBA uh, with his moves. And, and every game, it seems like he gets quicker and quicker. There's multiple occurrences of him – burning somebody and dunking a basketball that with that, with that same face, like just vicious. I, that happens two to three times a game. It's, it's a given. So that's really exciting to watch. And once he develops a jump shot, he's, he's going to be the best player in the NBA. And that's not even biased. That's just, if you watch this guy play basketball every single night, it is just so apparent how talented this guy is and how incredible of an athlete he is. We also saw him get matched up on, on LeBron at one point during the game, LeBron tried to drive it right down the lane and Simmons stripped it from him. Uh, there was also another occurrence where he recorded another steal, led the break, and fed Ursan Ilyasova uh, to finish off that break. So welcome back to Philly, Ursan. Urs, there's a reason Ursan came back here. He thrived here when he was here. Um, the, him and Embiid, um, they're, they're plus on the court. When they were on the court together, it was, I think, the best in the NBA. They know how to work together, and obviously Simmons, he could he could work with anybody. So Ursan came here for a reason. Um, he's he's the perfect guy to come in here and and spread it the ball out, 
when when Simmons and Abita are on the court. And it's tonight showed that. I, I'll tell you this, but whatever Colangelo has with Ursan's agent, I really like it because we didn't give him that big money. And while, while it was unfortunate, just the notion of now that even makes the Okafor trade look even worse. He's a fuck. Like Ursan Ilyasova, Booker, it's, it's a no-brainer, and he's going to really help us to potentially even win a series or who knows, even two. Obviously far-fetched, but he's going to be that guy to help us out in the playoffs. Yeah, and, you know, there's people that out there that are saying, well, you basically traded Joel or, uh, uh, Jalil Okafor for nothing. Well, that's not really true. Uh, you know, if, if, as long as you look at it in this sense, you basically gave away a first round or second round pick for Ursan Ilyasova and Marco Bellinelli. You can look at it like that. And the, the percentage that, that a second round draft pick actually works out for you, uh, pretty slim. So the fact that you got Marco and Ursan Ilyasova, some punch off the bench, some much needed shooting off the bench, you needed it for the stretch run. You absolutely do. And at the end of the day, it's just nice to have Okafor off the team. Yeah, I, I would have gave I I would have like what we gave up for him. That's I, I would have even done more. Just just get him out. He was not. He was a cancer to have around, and he's over in Brooklyn, mouth and off, making immature comments all the time about the Sixers. And I think he's been DNP'd five games in a row now. So he won't be in the NBA next year. Uh, sad story, but you know he didn't come in in the NBA with the best attitude, but. Uh, enough of Okafor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, on, on to the game at hand. You know, the, the game actually matters tonight. So, Joel Embiid, 17 points, 14 rebounds. You know, it, it's crazy because it felt like he was kind of quiet for a lot of the night. But when you look at the stats, not really. But the, the one uh, big sequence that he had. So, you had Kyle Korver uh, basically hounded him. He, he was near midcourt. He tried to drive it down the lane, swatted it away from him. Then at the other end, he's posting up. And he's doing his, his uh, prototypical spin and one-footed fadeaway from the baseline, all net, Joel Embiid. You know, if his nickname wasn't already the process, he, it would definitely be the disruptor because he is the ultimate disruptor on the court, on the offensive end and defensive end. He'll, he'll, do, he'll quietly put up those consistent stats every night now, and then he'll have those bursts where he just does like – He'll swat a shot, and then he'll, he'll drain the three, and then he'll, he'll shot, and then he'll get his own offensive rebound three times in a row, and then he'll, he'll kick it out. He's, he was dominant this game. It was a kind of a quiet dominance. Yeah. But yeah. nobody on the Cavs could stop Joe Olmby. That is for damn sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, use that uh, jab step jumper a couple of times, uh, that patented uh, face-up shot of his. So a lot, lot of that too. And uh, Chris Weber. Just correcting him real quick. You know, it, it's ambidextrous. It's not amphibious. You know, I, I know he's a former player. He, he's not exactly, you know, a, a Rhodes Scholar. But uh, they're just correcting him real quick. Ambidextrous. Amphibious. Adjective. Relating to living in or suited for both land and water. <laughs> or military <laughs> operation involving forces landed from the sea. An amphibious assault. And that, my friends, is the epitome of what Ben Simmons is to do. That, that should be his, the name of his move, where he's one-on-one with someone and blows by them. And they're, he, he's already dunked, by, and they're not even turned around it. That's, that's called an amphibious assault. Yeah. It doesn't matter if he's playing basketball on land, on the ground, uh, in the air, in the water. That is an amphibious assault. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I wonder if – you got to wonder if Weber purposely did that or <laughs> either, either way, it's amazing. If he had planned that out, if he found that word and planned to use that at some point, that's amazing. Or if he just legitimately met ambidextrix and this is what came out of his mouth, also incredible. <laughs> How about J.J. Redick tonight? So he, he had a team leading 22 points, four of seven from three, and also a big dagger near the end uh, with that baseline jumper, that wet jumper of his. Best thing about J.J. Redick is he, he's not afraid to shoot the ball, and he never gets discouraged, even if he is missing a couple shots in a row. For instance, I think that shot you're talking about, on the previous possession, he had uh, free throws. I, there was only 
like two and a half minutes left in the game. There were some crucial free, free throws. This is right when the Cavs got back within four and he missed his first free throw, which is for him to do that. You're a 90, like 94% foul shooter to miss a free throw in that situation. Like I, I was like, really, really dude. But then he comes back down the court and he comes up with a clutch shot. So JJ Redick, he, he comes through. I, I hated the other night how people were um, kind of talking shit on him for missing that, that three at the end of the game. I think it was the Heat game. Someone made a good point. Like, we pay him money to shoot 95% free throw percentage and, and drain threes. We don't pay him to specifically always make one three. Mm-hmm. And he's been doing his job. So That might have been Derek Bodner's tweet. Derek Bodner had a tweet like that that was like, uh, he's paid to make 40% of his three-pointers. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes that, that 60% comes into play at the end of the game, even if you're wide open. So, uh, that, yeah. That I mean, was Bodner. Definitely yeah, Bodner. He, it's he, always Bodner. He's the it's most. always Bodner. Bodner is the GOAT. <laughs> he is. He is the GOAT. He's, he's kind of like, he always keeps it cool, man. He never yeah. gets too excited. Never gets, he, he's really good at the job. Yeah, he, had, he had also had a good point when everyone wanted to cut uh, Amir Johnson instead of Booker. Uh, because obviously Booker, he has this stigma about him now. Not many people like him. He's kind of annoying to watch, frustrating. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a no-brainer to keep him over Booker just because the role that Amir Johnson plays as backup center, he, he does a pretty decent job at it. And he's, a veter- he's more of a veteran, and he's played on the Celtics, played on winning teams. He's, he's, he's a valuable asset to have. And – it was the right move, as Bodner explained very well. That's what he does. That's why he's Derek Bodner. Derek Godner, as, as some people call him. Uh, so uh, the, the other thing that the Sixers did tonight, uh, out-rebounded Cleveland 54-45. to 45. So uh, it seemed like they were always clearing the defensive glass. They're among the league leaders in, in rebounding, if I, if I saw the stat correctly earlier. Uh, so, I mean, hitting the board, Strull and beat. I mean, I talked about the 14 rebounds he had. So that, that's where he was, uh, basically making his big impact was actually the glass. And he had a, he had a tip in, uh, where he skied up for the board. A- another one that was a little bit more nonchalant where you kind of like grabbed it with the left hand and just one swoop, uh, put it in. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there you go. Pounding the glass. And B, if it comes back to you, he is a disruptor. I can't tell you how many rebounds that they get or from him. He's, he tips it back or tips it up yeah. into himself. He's very it's, – it's an interesting strategy. No, nowhere near like a Dennis Rodman type rebounder, but it yeah. works because he's, he's such a freak. But, yeah, man, I mean, him 14 rebounds, Covington 10 rebounds. Covington's stat line, 10 points. Is, is that what – am I reading it right? 10 that rebounds, 10, 10 rebounds. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Okay, I thought I saw triple-double. I saw he has 10 – Defensive rebounds and ten rebounds, so all of his oh, rebounds okay. were defensive. Gotcha. But he had ten. He had ten and ten. Yeah. And then you got Sarge, Sarge and Simmons both had nine. That's you got out of your out of your starting five. You got you got nine, nine, ten, and fourteen. That's you know, you that's, know what's that's impressive? because of Joe Embiid. You know what's impressive? They, they had this brief two game losing streak. You, you lost at Washington. You lost at Miami. You had some rumblings out there that. Oh, maybe the Sixers, they, they, they can't beat a good opponent on the road. They, they can't close it out. And then we saw it tonight. They basically led from start to finish. And no, there was no blown lead tonight. They, when, when the Cavaliers got back to within four, they put their pedal back, put their foot back on the gas, and they just sprinted right, right past them. In the words of Jason Kelsey, we wanted it more. We wanted it more. <laughs> I mean, that's Simmons wanted it more. And all this talk, honestly, all the talk of LeBron to Philly, that's – Simmons started it with that Instagram post over All-Star Weekend. And once and once Simmons – they got the people talking. And like you said, the best way to get someone to join you, beat them. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the way to earn respect. They're, they were out there tonight to prove to LeBron, hey, we are legit. Consider us. All right, so speaking of recruiting, uh, let's take a video, uh, look at a video right now from, from Jessica Camerato, NBC Sports Philadelphia. So I'm going to share the screen real quick, and we're going to play this. So LeBron James, stick to basketball, 
never get into acting. LeBron, over the uh, All-Star break, did you go to any high schools in Pennsylvania? And if so, why? Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. Liar! Over the All-Star break, I was on vacation, I went to Los Angeles. Couldn't even look at her! Liar! So, he first repeats the question. <laughs> then he ne never makes eye contact. Smiles and laughs. Yeah, he giggled. <laughs> and then, while, not, while never maintaining the eye contact, kind of goes a little bit more in-depth in the question than he has to. Starts over, overthinking and over-talking. All signs of a liar. <laughs> yes. But, I mean... At the end of the day, I, I think him checking out school, it's, it's not by no means a lock, but, I mean, if you're in, why, why the hell not look if you're yeah. in the area, you know? I, I'm sure he's looking at schools and many – this is just part of his process of yeah. elimination. Yeah, absolutely. If he can't find good schools in Philly, he's not going to move over the kids. So, he's, he's just he, – he probably does that when he goes to Houston. He probably does that on, honestly, a list of about 10 cities. At the end of the day, um, while it, it is fun – to talk about this because it is somewhat realistic talking about it now is just it's the point where there's kind of not much to talk about and it's it's a fun topic to kind of just over talk but it's it's very far away july 1st is very far away and there's no reason to think about it now because the baron has no idea what he's doing right now so many things could change between now and july 1st which is the only thing that kind of agitates me about continuously talk about it but at the same time if LeBron James signs at Philadelphia there will be riots similar to the night the Eagles won the Super Bowl yeah grease up the pulse grease them up grease them up and obviously if you're LeBron what do you expect him to say I mean you're gonna say oh, yeah yeah we we took the kids from Alfred Prep we took a big tour get the is hell he out. even is he even allowed to say anything because you know yeah, technically I don't think he is that's tampering yeah, there's the tampering because coaches get fined for tampering all the time. I don't know if it's the same, I'm, I'm, but there, there could be legal aspects to it, but getting fined. And also, why you don't want to show your cards now. He can do anything he wants. Yeah. He's showing. He's got options. He's flirting. That's what he's doing. He's flirting. We're trying to figure out if he's a tease, wh whether it's genuine or whether he's that girl at the bar that, you know, is just flirting all night getting free drinks. We don't know. Uh, but – He's flirting, man. He, he, he was flattered by the billboards. He talked about that the other night. Uh, he, he, he doesn't like the potholes in Cleveland. And then, and then even tonight, he was wearing the blue shoes. If, if he was in a Sixers uniform, they would have matched perfectly. I'll tell you what. The best thing that happened was the Eagles winning the Super Bowl. I feel like not only LeBron, but this has influenced a lot of athletes. They see how we reacted as a city and how much love we've shown and how these Eagles have just won the Super Bowl, how they're treated and the way they're acting. Like you could tell that they embraced this and had just as much fun as we did watching them finally win the championship for us. And I think players, they love being appreciated, especially LeBron of all people. He's been kind of weird his whole career. You know, this guy is the type that wants to be appreciated. And if he came here and he won a championship, he would be embraced and appreciated more than anything. I Absolutely. mean, if LeBron James comes to Philadelphia and signs here, this will be the biggest free agent, the most influential human to make Philadelphia his home since Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> it's, it's not even a debate. And before that, William Penn. LeBron James, Ben Franklin, William Penn. Those would go down to the top three most influential signings this, this city has ever had. Yeah. So we'll get into uh, this discussion just real quick. I'll, I'll ask you the question because I know you're a LeBron hater just like Kyle is. Kyle cannot get past his bias. He doesn't want LeBron in Philadelphia. So I'll ask you, do you want LeBron in Philly? Hate is a strong word that I've used in previous times to describe my feelings for LeBron. I would say – I, I don't like LeBron, but however, I have always respected LeBron, um, especially as an athlete. And I'm not, and I'm not ignorant. LeBron James is obviously the best player in the world. Um, and to have him come to Philadelphia, I mean, 
I don't understand how you cannot want the best player in the world to come to your team. There's been a lot of arguments I've been hearing, um, like one being, oh, it's anti-process. It would, it would fuck up the whole damn process. Dude, the definition of the process would be if LeBron James signed here. The process is building a team through the draft, building your core through the draft to the point where you are now an attractive enough team to attract a top, like a LeBron, the be, literally the best player in the world. Yeah. To come to your, because no one, Philadelphia has never been. I, the last time we were in a conversation as a free agent destination was in the early days when Moses came here. Even when Iverson played here, no one wanted to come play with AI. So this is the first time ever since the early days that we are a destination. And that is because of the process. That would be part of the process. We aren't going to win a championship without signing some sort of a free agent eventually down the line. This is how championship teams are built. Shaq and Kobe, when they won, Shaq was at the twilight of his career. Kobe was right on the rise. LeBron James is still in his prime. Granted, it's, I'd say if you're on a scale of zero to 100%, when it, once he hit 100, he's at his prime. He's like in the 80% range, 75, 80% maybe. So we got some years of LeBron. And also, he comes here, he's going to extend his career. He's not going to have nearly as much pressure. He's going to be able to chill. Ben Simmons is going to be the primary ball handler. You got Embiid with you. He's the perfect complement to everything. Yeah, the, I, I think he's a, a perfect complement too. Uh, the, so Kyle was kind of making the argument that he, he doesn't think Simmons and LeBron can play together. I, I don't really agree with that. I, I think, if anything, like they're an up-tempo team. They like to go up and down the floor. I mean, LeBron and Simmons, that's dangerous in the, in, in the uh, open floor. So from Kyle's perspective, maybe if you use the argument of two negative, two positives equals a negative, or two negatives equals a positive, or cancel each other out because they're similar players. Because at the end of the day, Ben Simmons could play with anybody. Yeah. And LeBron James could play with anybody. Yeah, so what true. happens when you put the guy that could play with anybody with the guy that play with anybody? Does it cancel out, make it something bad? In my opinion, no. When I say those two could play with anybody, that's including they could play with each other. Yeah. Um, especially again, there are different parts. Ben Simmons never wants to really shoot the ball. And to quite perfectly honest, if LeBron came here, I'd be fine with him continuing to have that mentality because LeBron will shoot. LeBron's probably his, his jump shot in three, they're going to actually improve over the next few years. Cause he's at the phase of his game, similar with Jordan at the end of his career. He's going to, he wants to extend his Career. And this is with Kobe the two. He's going to season shooting. He's going to perfect that. And that's, that's what he's going to, I, I just I don't understand how but basically every person that is right now saying they don't want LeBron to come here, they'd be on agree with it. Guarantee you, like if it actually happens, they'll be celebrating just as hardcore as everybody else. I think part of it is not wanting to get the hopes up because it's still kind of a far-fetched theory at the end of the day. While realistic, it's far-fetched. Yeah. And I'm also in that game of I don't want to get my hopes up. But if it actually happens, it's going to be dope. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. It's, it's more realistic than a lot of people might think. If, if I know LeBron the way I think I know LeBron, he is halfway to Michael Jordan in terms of the championships. He is obsessed with catching the ghost, catching the legacy of MJ. So – this would be the perfect destination, not only extend his career, but, but win a multiple championships where he could potentially catch the GOAT. Yeah, and also the process of elimination, you see other teams. At the end of the day, L.A., LeBron isn't sniffing L.A. as, oh. long, as, as long as the Ball family is involved in that organization. Yeah. I was, he's going to stay the hell away from that. And they got New York City. While New York City could be attractive to him, I don't know at this point of his life, if him moving to New York is going to be something he's going to enjoy doing, he's going to, he's going to be open to all the criticism in the world. He could only get in trouble in New York city. And that, that whole, that organization has always been a dumpster fire. Always yeah. will be that the owner Dolan is, is so long as that guy owns a team dumpster fire. He's not going to, he's not going to go to New York, Houston. That's a pretty attractive option. Now, yes. who do you have? So uh, he's, would he play with James Harden? Could LeBron and Harden play together? Yeah. Probably, because again, LeBron can play with anybody. Um, does he want to be in the West? That's the other question. 
So he's never been in the West. And I think that actually could be a reason for him to go to the West. Oh, okay. And Houston is a pretty, not a bad place to live. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice weather year round. Um, what are the, are the benefits to the state? Is there no, no, some sort of a tax? I don't know if there's a tax break in that state or not. Oh well, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but you might be right about that. You might be right about that. I'll, I'll have to look at that later, but I don't know for this show. I couldn't tell you. And I don't think he wants to play for pop and going back to Cleveland is always an option. Like, I think that's more realistic than a lot of people think. I, I honestly, that's ultimately where I, it, where I think he's going to go. I, I think it's Cleveland, uh, Philadelphia, or Houston. I think it's – However, things. if Cleveland doesn't get to the finals this year, which this year, like, it's, that's a lot more realistic than in previous years past for him to not make it. Yeah. Not a chance he slides back to Cleveland. If they make the finals and lose, I'd say it's 50-50. Mm-hmm. If they make the finals and win – I don't see him leaving. Like, no, why would you? Yeah, I agree. You with can't you. leave after you win the finals. Yeah. Know? So, I mean, he could always go back to Miami. <laughs> I don't think that would work either. So, when you like, when you do the process of elimination, uh, I'll, I'll I'll say pun intended there. Uh, it, it Philadelphia is very very realistic. It, it really is. It, it it really comes down to Cleveland and and Philly and. Uh, and Houston, just just from what we just talked about. I mean, New York, L.A., meh. Who wants to go there? You're not going to win in those places. If it if it's really about catching MJ, Houston and Philly is the way to go. And he's not going to go to Golden State just because. I mean, that's just people will lose all respect for him. Yeah, I've actually I forget. I wouldn't put it past him to do that though. It's <laughs> that's always an option. But I don't. I don't think. I wonder if the league would allow it. Like, you know, <laughs> Like kind of like what what they did with Chris Paul, they rejected the trade of the Lakers. Yeah, that to this day, that I think that's always going to curse the Lakers. Mm. Um, yeah, we got this beautiful new practice facility. He could choose if he wants to live in Jersey or the main line. Uh, like what's your, there's people that move here when they find like where they're like living, a lot they stay here for the most part. People like to live in this area. It's not a bad place to live. Um. So it's it's definitely realistic, and yeah, when you break it down by elimination, it's an option. And the yeah. fact that I love the fact that him and Simmons got the same agent, um, that that certainly helps. So, fingers crossed. Let's get it, baby. All right, it's gonna be so, a fun uh, off season. Very fun off season. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, that's pretty much it here. Uh, we went over the game, went over the LeBron scenario. So, you got anything else you want to say before we head out? Nah, man. I'm just going to end it with uh, amphibious assault. <laughs> Hashtag amphibious assault. <laughs> I'm going to start using that in my tweets. Whenever, whenever uh, I got a Simmons tweet, hashtag amphibious assault. I'm, gonna, I'm trademarking that, and I'm going to assault the Simmons one. Do it. Do it. We'll, uh, when we get into the shirt business here on the Bitter Birds, that'll be a shirt. Amphibious I, assault. I think we should get into that business sooner than later, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's a good call. We and uh, hit up Skolsky's dad and, and get that process going. Skolsky's always got the hook up with the shirts, man. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. It's some epic, right. epic ones back in the day that that are actually probably banned from this earth. <laughs> we had some shirts. We had some shirts. We did. Yeah. Yeah. I won't. I won't even repeat it. Won't even repeat it. Probably. Probably not a time. No. Not, not right now. Not, not, on, not, not, on the, not, not somewhere that's going to be floating on the internet at literally forever. <laughs> so. I'm trying to get on Fox Sports Radio, so I'm going to keep it PG from now on. That's what I'll do. Keep it PG like PG-13, uh, Paul George. What is that, Fox. Friday? What's that? Friday? You got Fox, Fox on Friday? Yep, that's tomorrow. So four to six, um, tune in. And it's looking like it actually might be a uh, – I don't know how to – like almost like a tryout because the guy, Zach Gell, is leaving the station on the 15th. And I just found out this today. So I don't know if this is like a trial run, uh, whether or not maybe I'll, I'll get something out of this, but we'll see. That would be huge uh, if I become his replacement. Gell, was he – Is he, um, he was a Phillies guy for a while, baseball guy, right? Um, I don't know if that's his brother – but uh, his Matt Gelb is the Phillies guy. Exactly. Oh, okay. 
that guy go. was the guy on the radio. Gotcha. I don't know if they're related or not, but uh, but they have the same last name, obviously. Sick man. Well, I told you. I, I think I told you on the last one. You got to hit the airwaves and get on the AM FM radio with the Bitter Birds. So this is <laughs> this is the start. This is the start, baby. Hell yeah! So. I don't know what my show would be called if, if I do take over, whether it's like the Bitter Bird show or just go with the Adrian FedQ show. I don't know. Amphibious Assault. <laughs> Amphibious Assault. <laughs> if you ever start a podcast, there's your podcast name. <laughs> Amphibious Assault. Dude, we're, dude, we're going to be – we're using that for the rest of the season, though. That's, that's Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I can guarantee you – so there's going to be a T-shirt. If there's a time to get in T-shirt to do this right now, create that shirt. Because yeah. if we don't, somebody will within. But that's actually probably already happening right now. Amphibious assault, and then I'll get a, a deep penetration shirt too for for Fletcher Cox. So, <laughs> deep penetration. That's that's my slogan. I don't know if you watch my Eagles. I do. I saw that a bunch. I I saw that a bunch of times pop up on my feed this year during games. I loved it. I, I probably <laughs> like every one. It's funny because like some people who don't know what it means, like they'll be like, "Ew!" Like. Nah, I picked up. I picked up on that. On I think the first time he did it. Yeah. Deep penetration. You got to elongate it too. So you got like deep penetration. Get it going, baby. It's all. It's, it's all, all right. about the um, the uh, the delivery. All about the delivery. Yep. Yep. And I always I like tell that. when he tweeted that I could tell that that was your delivery. Like if I would imagine you saying that out loud, <laughs> that's what I was hearing. Yeah, <laughs> I do that with all my tweets. Like, almost everyone I follow, I've, I make sure that if I've never heard their voice, I go on YouTube and I like look up a video because I want to know the voice associated mm. with the tweeting it. And I honestly, I only like following people that I that see enough that I, I know their tone too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you could read a tweet knowing the tone and the sound of the voice, that makes it a lot more fun. There you go. All right, so we're gonna end this now. Uh, we're going to end this amphibious assault currently. So that's Dave Rzinski. I am Adrian Fetchew. Take care. Peace out. <laughs>